Hey, Flip Geometry, we're going to jump back into the next lecture here. 7.6, we're looking at circles, sectors, and segments, so circles and parts of them. Here we go. We were looking at polygons last week, and this is just a, uh, a transitionary thought to help you go from regular polygons to circles. So as we increase the number of sides in a polygon, it closer and closer approximates a circle. The length of the apothem gets close to the circle's radius. Um, the polygon's perimeter approaches a circumference and the polygon's area approaches that of a circle's area. Let me show you. So a triangle, the apothem is a long ways different from the radius, and the perimeter is a long ways different from its circumference. But as we get four, five, six, seven, eight sides, now an apothem and a radius are really almost the same. And the perimeter of that octagon is very much like the perimeter of a circle. So as you get a greater number of uh, sides in a regular poly polygon, it closer and closer approximates a circle. So you're going to see several things today that make you think, huh, is that a circle or is that a polygon? Because sometimes there's a lot of overlap. So when you see that the area of a polygon is area is one half times the apothem times the perimeter, don't be surprised that you can also get the area of a circle a very similar way, one half times the radius, which for a circle is the apothem, times the circumference, which for a circle is the perimeter. Okay, so this isn't the normal area of a circle formula that you're used to, but it would also work uh, because the apothem of a circle is its radius and the, the perimeter of a circle is its circumference. So you can use that formula as a swap over. If you were to substitute in the formula for the circumference of a circle, which is 2 pi r, into that equation, 1 half times r times 2 pi r, let's combine like terms and simplify here, um, 1 half times 2 cancel each other out, so that just goes away. Now you have r times pi times r, or r squared times pi. Pi r squared is the area of a circle. So you can see that this formula, this formula for a polygon, works for a circle. As long as you consider that the circumference is this, you wind up with the same thing. So that leads us to the first theorem of this lesson, that the area of a circle is pi times the square of the radius. The area of a circle is pi r squared. Okay, this is something that you're going to use not just in this class, but you'll use it in physics, you'll use it in life, like all the time. You'll figure out the area of circles, I promise. This isn't just a one-time thing. Area of a circle is pi r squared. What is pi, by the way? Pi is something that, um, it's a Greek letter that stands for a non-repeating, non-terminating decimal. That is the relationship between a circumference and a, the diameter of a circle. So if you have a calculator with a pi button, just use that. If you don't have a calculator with a pi button, 3.14 is an acceptable approximation, although it's not the same as hitting the pi button on your calculator. If you have a pi button, use the pi button. Here we go. Let's do some work with this. So if we have a circle whose diameter is 10 meters, remember that a diameter is twice the radius. The diameter is 10 meters, that means that the, the radius is 5 meters. So we need to plug in 5 meters for r. Um, the circumference is 2 pi r. So 2 times pi times 5 would be 10 pi. Um, and you could leave it as 10 pi, or you could go ahead and plug it in and get 31.4 approximately square meters. Oh, meters, sorry, linear still, because we're in circumference. Um, the area would be pi times r squared. So 5 squared is 25. 25 pi square meters is an acceptable answer. But if you want to go all the way to the decimal, you get 78.5 approximately square meters. OK, you'll be doing this a bunch. Just like in a regular polygon, if we have the center of the polygon and we have an angle going out to two vertices, we have a central angle. The same thing is true of a circle. A central angle is an angle whose uh, vertex is the center of the circle and whose sides contain radii of the circle. So anytime you start in the middle of a circle and draw two radii and you have an angle, that's a central angle. Okay, And central angles come into play very much because um, they help define a sector, and they'll help define arcs in a minute, too. So a sector of a circle is the region bounded by two radii and the intercepted arc. So it's, a, it's like cutting a piece of pie out of a pie, right? You get a sector. So next time somebody's cutting you a slice of pie or a slice of cake out of a round cake, you say, could I have a little bit larger sector, please? And they'll know, whoa, you know geometry. Yeah. Um, so it's like a slice out of the pie or a slice out of the circle. It's two radii the intercepted arc, and all and everything in between, all the stuff that you would shade in there. That's a sector, okay? A segment is, a, is an arc and a chord. So if you were to tick, uh, pick two points on the circle, 
um, a sector is bounded by the arc that goes around the circle from those two points and the cord that goes straight across the circle from those two points. So the uh, a sector is always something that's close to the edge. You would never slice a pie into a sector. You'd always slice, I'm sorry, never slice a pie into a segment. You'd always slice a pie into sectors. So a segment of a circle, an arc, and a cord, and everything in between. When you're looking at how much of an area of a circle have you defined in a sector, in a slice of pie, it's a very simple relationship. The area of a sector is to the area of a circle. What the central angle of that sector is to 360, then that makes perfect sense. If you cut a 45 degree angle sector out of a circle, then you have as much area of that circle as 45 degrees is of 360 degrees, right? How much of the central angle did you take up? That's proportional to how much of the area of the circle you took up. Hope that makes sense. So then we can take that proportionality and we can make it an equation. So the uh, area of a circle, remember, is pi r squared. And the ratio, the portion of that circle that you represent in a sector is the relationship between the central angle and the th full 360. So we're going to put those two, two things together. Instead of a, a proportionality, we're going to stick it all together in one equation. So here I have the central angle out of 360. This is like a percentage, this much of a, of a whole circle. And then this is the formula for the area of a circle, pi r squared. So I want to know what's the area of that sector. Well, it's the central angle over 360 times the area of the circle times pi r squared. So if you have a radius and you have a central angle, you can calculate how much area that sector represents. We'll do lots of examples of this in the classwork tomorrow. Now it gets a little bit harder when you're looking at the area of a segment. A sector is just a slice of a pie. It's just a portion of a circle. But a segment is different. It's only that stuff on the outside right? So to find the area of a segment of a circle, you find the area of the related sector, and then you have to subtract out the triangle. So it's a sector minus the isosceles triangle. Alrighty, now we've got to do a little bit more work. So let's find the area of a sector and a segment. What we're going to have to do first is the sector and then subtract the triangle out to get the segment, all right? So um, the area of the sector is 84 degrees out of 360. That's the relationship of the central angle to the whole circle, right? That's the ratio times the area of the whole circle, 3 squared times pi. So that's 9 pi. The 84 360 reduces to 7 30 And then when you combine this up into one fraction, you get 63 pi, 9 times 7, right? 63 pi over 30 times uh, so, sorry, 63 pi over 30 square centimeters. Uh, that is approximately 6.6 .6 square centimeters if you round to the tenths place. Okay, so about 6.6 .6 square centimeters is this sector. Now I have to subtract out this triangle. Triangle is one-half times the base times the height. So one-half times four, that's the base, times the height. You have to use some trigonometry, Pythagorean's theorem, to figure out that the height of this is actually radical 5. Um, so 1 half times 4 times radical 5. 1 half times 4 is 2, so 2 radical 5 square centimeters. Okay. Now, we need to subtract out the triangle from the sector to get the segment. Right. So that's 6.6, .6, that's the sector, minus the triangle, 2 radical 5, and gives us approximately 2.1, again rounding, square centimeters. 2.1 square centimeters for this segment here. And that's it, folks. Um, if there's any questions, you can put them in the comments field below, and I'll get to them as quickly as I can, or we'll talk about it in class tomorrow. Until then, God bless you, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Good night.